guess. Okay. Uh, I think it's pretty good that I'm uh, following Professor Shapiro's talk. There's a little bit of overlap between the things that our two labs are working on. Um, I'm John Licato. This is primarily this work is primarily done by my uh, colleagues and advisor Naveen and and Selma Bringshort. Uh, essentially, uh, the motivation or the primary motivation that that uh, behind this particular work was with the Watson system. So, <clears throat> I'm sure, some of you have heard of this. This is the uh, IBM system that. Um, it's supposed to be the state of the art in, in question answering and natural language processing by IBM, so one that beat the best human experts on Jeopardy. Uh, and we were discussing potential collaborations with the guys from IBM on this project. And uh, we noticed that it had, you know, it can, it can pull up some information pretty, pretty quickly, pretty impressively, but it has a noticeable weakness, and that is that it's unable to answer questions like this if I have four foos and five bars, then, you know, how many foos if I do this, blah, blah, blah. And uh, if, if that's too abstract for you, a more practical use would be a question like that. What is IBM's sharp ratio in the last six, 60 days of trading? This is a question that we propose to the IBM guys themselves because this is more interesting to them, directly relevant, obviously. It's got business applications. And uh, they, they, the at least one of the representatives, a guy named Chris Welty, admitted that, yeah, this is a... It's a glaring problem with, uh, with Watson and something that it needs to be improved. So how can we do that? Um, well, our approach is to find a, a way of formalizing natural language that has two requirements. We want it to be fully formal, and we want it to be rigorously computational. The thing that these two requirements have in common is it tries to reduce some of the ambiguity of natural language. Uh, so that we can more easily apply computations to it and define computations over it. <clears throat> um, so if you look at the way existing formalizations do this sort of thing, it treats language and cognition as uh, two completely se separate formalizations. And uh, we have a problem with this approach. So I'm just kind of going through it. Essentially, what we want to do with natural language processing is take some arbitrary sentence in English or you know whatever language, and find a very precise meaning for it. And I know that obviously people familiar with this work might say that natural language statements have, because of the inherent ambiguity in in human languages, might have many different interpretations. But we we want to say that most, if not all, of those interpretations interpretations have formal definitions or have formal ways of writing it out. You know, yeah. So we want to figure out what formal structures we can use to formalize the meanings the, or the possible interpretations of the sentences. And we want to do that without committing to a particular family of uh, formal logics. <clears throat> and we want to figure out how to map sentences to meaning computationally. Okay. Uh, another motivation is if we okay, so if we have uh, some formal language that can be used to describe the meaning that we extract from natural language sentences, right? How can we then use that to produce AI systems that can perform planning by reasoning over these formal structures. That's one, of our, that's one of our goals. I'm just sort of trying to set up some of the motivations for having a formal account here. Um, and we want to account for things like this. What should be uttered at a certain time in order to plan for, uh, to achieve a goal in a social setting? What should be uttered to make a person believe a certain thing? Understanding what another person in conversation believes, so we need to be able to represent nested thoughts like a a believes that B believes that C believes this and reason over complex, you know, recursive relations such as that. So <clears throat> we want to be able to account for sentences that do two key things. Number one, represent the state of the world, so the ex extensional meaning describing all apples in the world 
all objects in the world that satisfy the predicate is apple, for example. And also internal representations of agents, so the beliefs that I talked about. Jack believes that all apples are red. And we think that a formalization should be able to account for the wide variety of reasoning processes there are. The, the idea is that uh, oops. there's a wide variety of reasoning types that we use, right? Analogical, deductive, inductive, all of that. And all of these reasoning processes can be described using natural language. So if we have a formalization that captures the meaning of natural language, that formalization should be able to capture the reasoning processes themselves. That's, that's what we believe anyway, and that would be an ideal goal of a formalization that captures natural language. So just to put it in symbols here, we start with a set of natural language expressions, L, and we want to get to the right side here. We want to have some formal expressions defined in some formal language and apply computations over them. So what we want to find is this process mu that allows us to get there. <coughs> There may be some issues with where contextual knowledge goes here, and I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that we've committed to a particular theory on that. For example, you might say that in order to properly translate the meaning, uh, I'm going to go with you, a statement like that, right? You need to have a lot of knowledge about what the current context of the discussion is, who is talking to who, where they are when that's being said. And that can either be part of L here, or we can define a we can make it part of mu. We haven't really uh, committed to that yet, so this is just a... Just the start. So, <clears throat> earlier when I was saying that we want to be able to capture all reasoning processes that humans carry out using this, this, uh, this formal language, we can write it out this way. For every reasoning and cognitive process that can be captured in natural language, we need a formal analog within our formalization. So this, this should be uh, pretty, pretty simple. I'm just going to go to the, uh, the actual formalization that we're proposing here. But first, there, I don't know if there's anybody in here that's familiar with current literature on natural language processing and, and the attempt to formalize it. But the way that we have it kind of summarized, and I'm just going to be brief on this, is the following. We have two main types. One of them is based on Montague's framework. And what that framework tries to do is something similar to what I'm proposing here. We want to give a formal account of the possible meanings or formal expressions of natural language statements and give a general theory of how to map uh, natural language statements to those meanings or, or those formal structures. One of the main problems with that approach, according to the critics, is that it apparently fails to give an account of cognition and reasoning that uses meaning in language. Now, I don't think that's particularly important. The critics of that approach do think it's important. But there are other critiques that uh, apply to Montague's framework. One of them is that it's too heavily model theoretic. <clears throat> and if it's heavily model theoretic, apparently that makes it really hard to actually build a practical system that can reason autonomously and without a large degree of human input automatically translate human sen uh, natural language sentences. and So th this is uh, something that there's apparently a lot of literature on. If you use model theoretic semantics, it's really difficult, too impossible to account for knowledge. So in response to these types of critiques of the, of the Montague framework, things like things based on discourse representation theory came up. And uh, it, it tried to address the perception that with formal accounts of natural language processing or, or the meaning in natural language statements, they don't, they're, they're too rigorous. They, they, don't address, they don't address all of the pragmatic, uh, some of the more dynamic features of language, the, the, the pragmatics that are, uh, are missing from formal semantics. So discourse representation tries to tries to fix that, but in, in, in the process, it kind of throws out some of the nice properties that we have with formal languages. It, we lose a way of handling intentional sentences. Uh, we, there, there doesn't appear to be a clear way to handle things like tense and time. So what we want to do is shift things back in the other direction, the more formal direction, 
use a computational logic with two things, a well-defined grammar and a well-defined proof calculus. This is somewhat similar to what I've been mentioning earlier. So finally, come to an example, right? If you have a sentence like this, Jones intends to convince Smith to believe that believes that we're the cat lying in that. Okay. I'm sure most of you can understand this sentence, right? It's really complicated, but if you read it over a couple times, you can form some representation of your head in your head of what this means. Now we would formalize it using something like this. We have intentional operators. Uh, I is intends, C is convinced, B is believes. You have a scoped term and you have a subjunctive conditional. That's the, uh, where is it? Were the cat. So this is how we'd represent it in, in the language that, we're, that we've been using. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go in a little more detail into exactly what that language is, but <coughs> In case you might be thinking that, well, that sentence is just unnecessarily complicated. You don't come across that sort of thing very often. Even in a sentence like this, if A says to B, can you pass the salt? We, we, we note that there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of things that happen in the background that need to be represented by any formal account of natural language processing. For example, you have to, in order to understand this, you need to understand things like A wants salt, A believes that I have access to the salt, otherwise he wouldn't be asking. These things uh, either arise from subsequent processing of the formal structures derived from this statement or they are assumptions that hold before you do the processing. So what we're um, using is something based on the event calculus or the cognitive event calculus which is divined um, has two, two major features, has an intentional feature and extensional, and I believe the extensional is fully based on first order logic, which makes it relatively easy to translate into full first order logic statements and then perform computations over. We want to be able to reason over some of the, oops, uh, all that work and Getting to the end of the slide, okay. So some of the doxastic aspects of cognition are really important here. We have things like if John wants, sorry, if John wants to reason about Naveen, who is thinking about what Selmer believes, who uh, is thinking about what the audience believes, and if I have to react based on that complicated nested belief, then we want a language that allows us to represent those kinds of complex thoughts and reason over them. So what I mentioned earlier was we're using something based on the cognitive event calculus. Call it the uh, DCEC star, Deontic Cognitive Event Calculus with a star. And this is a somewhat incomplete list of what we have so far. We have some inference rules. And you notice on the right middle there, so I don't have a pointer, but we have something that maps the agent to the self. <coughs> oh, thanks. Um, and that's where the star comes from. It allows for self-reference. We have some examples of that. Look. We're still trying to mess around with the inference rules to make sure that everything that we want this thing to process can actually be done in this language. And we have some initial success. We've been able to demonstrate simple deduction, representation of beliefs about the self, analogical reasoning, some simple planning. There are some publications that we put out. Um, one of them I can, sh I can point you to if you're interested, but it tries to distinguish between this really subtle distinction here. So if you have, uh, look, at, look at the first two statements here. Jack believes that the person named Jack is rich and Jack believes that the person named Jack that he is rich. The difference between these two is, is rooted in the classic uh, de dicto and de re distinction. So I think de dicto is of the word or something like that? Yeah, okay. And de re is more uh, about the person, thing, the thing. Yeah, that's right. So it's a very subtle distinction that's been, uh, that's been studied very intensely. But we are able to reflect that subtle distinction, uh, as you can see, using the very slight difference between those two DCEC translations. And the other, the main focus of that other paper is the difference between third person and first person, they say beliefs, which is about the self. Um, 
Jack can believe that he himself is rich or if I believe that myself am rich or rich. And that's reflected <coughs> using those statements that uh, we've got over there. <coughs> yeah. So uh, another thing that we're trying to do with the DCEC is build a subset of English that we can use for natural language processing purposes. Uh, this particular project deals with uh, reasoning for UGVs, or unmanned ground vehicles. They have to reason about things like it's carrying the soldier currently, and at the bottom here, this is more interesting, it has to reason about obligation, deontic things. Uh, what's its responsibility? To, what, what, what its responsibility is in a particular situation, and we want to be able to not only show that it can perform reasoning, but that it can provide a proof of its reasoning so that it just doesn't perform a course of action and not justify itself. That kind of thing comes up pretty frequently and will have to be addressed. So in conclusion, the motivation for this sort of thing is, uh, like I said, with Watson, we want to figure out how to make that sort of thing smarter. And we think that a way to go about that is to take a look again at natural language processing and the uh, attempt to formalize natural language processing and uh, make it better. So computational logic is one possible answer. <clears throat> Thank you very much.